as I start on my cozy autumnal bookish day by scouring a little free library that is inside an entire building. They offer cozy beverages and reading chairs, as well as free Wi-Fi and of course, hundreds of free books. And if you can believe it, they offer a second location that doubles as an art installation. And you guys, this second location has so many books that the bathroom serves as book storage.
The next stop on my cozy autumnal bookish day was to stop in the public library's used bookstore. I love their Halloween setup and also how they organized this very cozy little space. And then I discovered that this small public library used bookstore had a sister store that was about a mile away and much larger. The word they used was warehouse.
Okay, so here is the haul from the Little Free Libraries as well as the used bookstores. And I will try to make sure that I tell you which ones I actually paid for. There actually weren't that many. I found a lot at the Little Free Library, so let's begin. This is The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. This has been on my wish list to read. In fact, I think it's on Scribd as an audiobook. But I thought maybe having something that I could jot notes into would be helpful for this. So this is, for lack of a better word, a self-motivation book. And it has all kinds of wisdom. Apparently she pulls in from Plato and Galileo, Edison, Einstein, all of these about this one secret and how to achieve better productivity and results. Next, I found Shakespeare and Company by Sylvia Beach. I, this spring, read some biographies about Sylvia Beach, and so to see what she actually wrote and have her own photos, I could not pass this up. So I'm just very excited to see if there's other information in here other than what I learned in the biographies I read and just really looking forward to learning a little bit more about her after the war. There's a lot of stories about her up to the war and kind of how she secretly moved all of the books from her shop front out so when the Germans came back the next day all of her stock was missing and they couldn't even tell that there had been a store there, which is a really great story. But I'm also curious to know what happened after that. So I'm hoping that's in here. Next is Caleb's Crossing. This is by Geraldine Brooks. I don't know that much about this book, except that I know that it is historical fiction. It is based on a true story and it is the story of a native uh, Wampanoag who becomes the first Native American to attend Harvard. I just love the the cover. It's just very, very beautiful. Next, I found A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. This is a book that I have already read, but I don't have it on my shelf. And I am hoping that I can give this to my kids when they are in high school. I think everyone should read this book. I will say that the beginning of this book, I remember I thought to myself, I don't understand a word that is going on in this. And it takes you a good, I recall half the book to figure out what the language is. I'll just read this sentence. They had no license for selling liquor, but there was no law yet against prodding some of the new vecheses, vestes, which they used to put in the old Moloko so you could peat it with the Velocite and the Synthamesque or Denkram or one or two other Veshkes, which would give you a nice quiet horror show, 15 minutes admiring Bog and all his holy angels and saints in your left shoe with the lights bursting all over your mask. A clockwork orange. Next is a Scott O'Dell Newberry Honor book. This is called The King's Fifth, and this is during the time of Conquistadors. I had it on our list to read for homeschool when we were studying this, but I never got it from thrift books, and so we didn't read it, so I'm happy to have it on our shelf. So when we circle back around to that in three years, we will have this to read. Next, I found The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. This is one that I paid for at the used bookstore, and it was only a dollar, which I feel like was a steal. Uh, Ray Bradbury is so popular right now. But my understanding of this book is that it is on the history of Halloween. Uh, Ray Bradbury does have a fictional tale kind of helping the plot move along, but that it is about uh, Halloween. I love the cover. I have seen mixed reviews about this, but I am pretty sure that I will enjoy it. And I do plan on reading it uh, at the end of October. Next, I found this one for free. Uh, it is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I am a fan of Neil Gaiman's. This book, I think, I mean, it's pretty thin. I think it gets conflicting reviews as well. So I'm not 100% sure what this is about, but I think it has to do with 
childhood trauma and promises that get made to children and whether we are able to keep them, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But I love that I found this hardcover copy of it. Okay, so this is called The Sussex Downs Murder. This is by John Bood, and it is in the British Library Cli Crime Classics, and it is set during the summer, so I actually will probably save this one. I have such a large TBR right now already, and I do like to read seasonally. So this is, was written in, I think, in the 30s. Yeah, in the 30s. So this was right about the time when all of those uh, crime classics in England were written. And this comes with some information about the author so that we can kind of learn about him. But I think he was fairly well known during the 30s. And this is just one of those classic detective novels. And then speaking of the murder mysteries written in the 30s. This is The Murder at Malawan Hall by Colleen Cambridge. So this is the last name of Agatha Christie's second husband, I believe. So my understanding of this is that the housekeeper, one of the main housekeeping staff members, is an amateur sleuth. And yes, and when there was a murder, uh, she is part of the process in solving it. So she works for Agatha Christie, she's learned a lot from her books, and uh, she's going to solve this murder at Agatha Christie's one of her homes. I just recently read a biography of Agatha Christie, loved it so much, so I'm excited to read this, although I will say, again, this actually is set in the summer, so I will probably save this to read next summer. Next is In This House of Bre Breed, Brede, Bredo, how do you pronounce that? How to pronounce C-R-E-D-E. -E. Let's listen. Breed. Breed. Great. So this is Rumor Gardens In the House of Breed. I don't know, again, that much about this, but I do think it is a very well-known classic novel. It is set, I think, in a house of nuns and I think it is the story of a woman who is middle-aged who has some sort of transformation and decides that she is going to live a religious life maybe try to join the nuns and there's a lot of characters in here that I think get fleshed out really well I think it's a pretty well-loved book like I think of call the midwife when I think of this so we'll see if I'm at all close on that. Next, I have three novels by Henry David Thoreau. This is The Maine Woods, Walden, and Cape Cod. I had the fortune this summer of seeing Walden Pond and where Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson and the Alcotts and Nathaniel Hawthorne all lived. When I saw this, I grabbed it because I have not ever read any of his larger works. And then I found The Shell Seekers by Rosamond Pilcher. I have read quite a few of Rosamond Pilcher's. I actually keep them on my shelves after I've read them, so they're not books that I read and pass on. They do uh, seem to have staying power on my shelf. So this one is probably a similar novel in that it is a sweeping family drama, family being possibly found family as well as um, blood family. I probably will be interested in reading this in the summer. I'm assuming with the shell part and all the flowers that it is more of a summer read unlike her winter solstice or even September. And then I have one more that's not here. I'll be right back. Okay, one more that I did buy, so it seems like I bought maybe two, was Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. I was ecstatic when I found this in the used bookstore because I had not gotten Moonstone out of the library. I was just relying on an ebook on Scribd and also the audio version on Scribd. And I just feel like with classics and Victorian novels, reading them on ebooks is not always the best for me. Like I want to hold it in my hand and be able to experience it differently and really have it stick. And so this copy 
has this tiny little tear here, which I am disappointed about, but it was only a dollar. You can't beat that, and I've already started it for Victober. I've already started tabbing it and everything, and so I know I've said this a lot, but I am very excited to have this in my hand and be able to read it this month with a copy that I just found for such a great price. This is my favorite time to go out and look at used books and check in little free libraries and see the fall decorations out and the leaves changing. It is just my absolute favorite. So I am so excited with my haul, especially since by my calculations, I paid $2.12 for all of these books. Leave in the comments down below, please, on if you know of any of these books and have enjoyed them and just let me know what you think about them. Until next time. So excited. How many times will I say that?